Hey everybody, this is David of Barnyard Bees. Well, we've got a little bit of external feeding going on. I wanted to show you a little sample of how we feed. I've showed videos of this in the past before. Uh, during the dearth, I'm a big believer in feeding away from your colonies for a period, when you, when, at least while we're in the dearth. Um, I've had issues and problems trying to feed, even with high top feeders uh, in smaller colonies, even with reducers, you can still cause robbing to occur. I've always had my best luck is with these external feeders away from the hive, at least for about a month, or pretty much, I mean, you'll know when the dearth is over, uh, the feeding frenzy uh, will slow down quite a bit when they start uh, picking up uh, goldenrod and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people disagree with this, and I've been over this and over this again and again about, uh, there are a lot of people worried about bees getting diseases from other bees congregating, feeding like this, that they'll mingle with other people's hives and such. Well, first of all, if you think about it, there's not a whole lot of beekeepers anyway. And you'll know pretty much if there's anyone in your area, even if there was. I don't believe this to be an issue or a problem. Uh, it's common sense. While you're in dearth, these bees are going to be on a feeding frenzy anywhere they can find sugar. That's in a city dumpster, at a local McDonald's dumpster, uh, spilled coke on a uh, concrete. These bees are going to be congregated in all these areas, all together, all mixed up together. So, saying that this right here, at least keeping the majority of my bees here confined to my yard in their feeding frenzy, makes more sense to me. And I've had very good luck with it. Now, I'll resume with the high top feeders right after this crazy dearth is over and when they're less likely to start robbing my smaller split colonies. So that's the big concern is when you still have small hives mingled in with big hives, you're gonna have issues because if the big hives find out the small hives have resources that they can take, bees are ruthless. And at this time of the year, they're even more ruthless. And they don't care. They'll smash that colony, kill the queen, steal the honey, and be happy about it the next day. They don't, they don't care. Um, bees are very ruthless. Now, now one thing, one good thing that I've noticed this year that I've not had an issue with yet, and it's still a little early, I understand that, uh, yellow jackets. Now a lot of that has to do with area to area, whether or not you have uh, wild colonies out there in the ground somewhere close to you. And a lot of times it's just, it's luck. You just don't have, maybe just don't happen to have a large number of uh, yellow jacket colonies close to you. So far, so good here. It's been really good. And another thing we've been really uh, lucky with this year is the low, low amount of hive beetles. Um, I've been going to, I'm making sure or keeping the colonies bare, no grass underneath, keeping that salt content really high. Uh, it, the salt will not hurt the bees. I promise that. And, and then again, I'm going to mention, no, it doesn't kill the earth for uh, the environmentalists that think a little bit of salt under your beehives is going to uh, destroy the earth. Uh, I don't listen to that stuff. Uh, but here's where we're at. I, the way I got it set up, uh, I just have a catch, something to catch underneath of it because a lot of that drips, especially when you first start, because it's got to build up a vacuum. And then after it builds up a vacuum, you're okay. But I put a little bit of extra down there. Now, you're always going to have some dead bees. Uh, anywhere they're, they're congregated like that, you're going to have bees that, that get stuck. And, and I just had filled this and put it under there so 
that's why it's so sticky right now. Uh, by the end of the day, that'll be completely bone dry underneath because they'll have cleaned up every bit of that sugar down there. And they'll, they'll just resume and fill their hives up and staying busy. It's a good thing it keeps the bees busy this time of year. That's one good thing about the, the external feeders is uh, the internal feeders, uh, I mean, they, they pretty much pull it from the top and put it in the bottom. At least with this, you're giving your bees an opportunity to stay busy. And it does make them happier. It does make them nicer bees when, they're, uh, when their foragers can forage. <laughs> it helps out a lot. Hey, this is just a, a little tip from Barnyard Bees. Put you out one of these. You can make these um, five-gallon bucket feeders. Very easy. I got a video on there. If I can dig back and find it, I'll post it below. And uh, where I actually made these feeders. Very easy to make. It just takes a small drill bit, and that's about it. But don't forget, folks, we got 2024 packages for sale for next year. Packages, nukes, be keeping supplies. Don't forget to check us out, barnyardbees.com. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Bees.